practicing the steps, first of all, to, to actually do the steps is exactly what you were talking about, about that fear thing. That's a great example mm -hmm. of the steps are a good thing. Everyone could benefit from doing the steps. I don't, I can't think of anybody who wouldn't, especially if you're guided by a sponsor, but everything in people wants to not do it. Like the, even one, two, and three people can do, but when you get to four and you start making a list of your resentments, like the, people just halt, right? You make a list of your resentments because nobody wants to admit they're resentful. <laughs> and then what did people do to you? And then you look at what's your part. And that also was really scary because I thought, oh, you're going to do this thing that my family used to do where you turn this all around and it turns out to be my fault, right? But when I actually did it, it took me 18 months in program before I finally just took it to a Starbucks and I'm like, I'm doing this no matter what. I realized one, that how hard it was for me to admit how resentful and angry I was. Because I thought, well, okay, fine, maybe just this one. So I wrote down the name in the situation. And then I was like, okay, fine, maybe this other. Oh, okay, this person too. And then I had four pages. And I didn't even know I was carrying that around with me. Mm -hmm. And then when I, by the time I got through it, it felt so good. It felt so good being able to really look at myself, not being afraid to look at myself. And to be able to see those parts of my contribution to what happened. And I remember this feeling of, of like higher powers guidance of, I'm not showing you these things because I want you to feel bad at all. It's because until I can show you your part, you're, you're going to keep repeating these things. And this is a way of protecting you. Like this is a way mm. of helping you because mm. all I can control is me. Right. And so it was like this, it was like this helpful guidance of if I can see these things, I don't have to keep setting these dominoes in motion that cause all these other situations for them to be hurt or me to be hurt. And so it was amazing. So doing the steps, all of them, the fifth step is about confession. Like they say in 12 step, we're only as sick as our secrets. And so this idea that there was absolutely nothing I had to take to the grave. Like mm. again, confession is Christian, but how many people actually do that? Right. So yeah. I had to do that. And my first attempt at it, I was referred to this lady who was really, they said she was good, but she was actually pretty mean. And so walking out of that meeting was actually part of my recovery. That was an example of where in the past I wouldn't have listened to myself and I would have just done my confession with this woman. But as I walked out of there, I felt my hair parsing like that. That was just a part of your recovery. But I was like, no, no, I'm going to do these friggin' steps if it's the last thing I do. So then I asked around and they said that there was this guy and they're like friars or whatever. And they're like, oh yeah, he's taken so many of them. He's basically like falling asleep when you're doing it. And I'm like that, I want that guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's my guy. I'm going to him. And so I, I had to push through just like how we talked about today with the podcast, that perseverance and are you serious? Right. And we had some bumps in our aligning our times, but now is the moment and we're here. And so I showed up for myself and for the process and that practice. And so you actually work the program in your daily life as well. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I work it stronger. Sometimes I work it less. I can feel the effects when I'm not working my program. Like step 10 is continue to take personal inventory. And when we were wrong, promptly admitted it. There's times when I'm not so prompt, kind of like go right. back and be like, okay, something's going on. The other thing that's really fascinating about 12 step that was very different than my experience with Christian Christianity, but that is meaningful. They, the early church met daily and to try to get people to commit today. Can you imagine to say, okay, we're going to meet every day. It's so radical, but it works, right? So they have this thing in 12 step that's 90 meetings in 90 days, and they've just seen way better effects with addicts. Wow. So the deepening of that community rather than just once a week is huge. And the other thing that they say when you first get there is pick up the phone and they call it a hundred pound phone because it's so hard to do. But one of the things that was like an ego death for me was learning how in the moment to pick up the phone if I was struggling and to believe that the person on the other end actually wanted my call. And mm. not only did they want my call, but in 12 step, they say, when you get to help somebody else, it's actually for you. Mm -hmm. So there's something that you're doing this podcast for you, actually. It's keeping you sober, right? doesn't mm -hmm. matter if anybody else is getting well, you're staying sober, right? So Absolutely. for me, getting asked to be able to do this interview and getting to share my own experience, my strength and my hope, this is for me. This is keeping me sober. I would say thank you for giving me that. Mm -hmm. So that's really different than in, in my own 
upbringing Christianity, where if you did service or volunteered, you're like, you're welcome. You're welcome that I did the children's church today (laughs) or whatever. You're welcome that I've been a missionary to the inner city or whatever. (laughs) Instead of, no, you need this because if you don't have this, you're going to get caught in the lie. Yeah. Um, So it was a really different, it was just such a different understanding of the way really. And the more that I understand it, as I understand the way of Jesus, it's not counterintuitive. It's counter ego. You know, there's something in me (laughs) that is actually intuitively drawn to this way, but it really is hard to overcome that fight within me too, that is attracted to the lie. Yeah. And that's what, that's what sounds like truth to me. My spiritual awakening was very much a a self-awareness moment, a a realization of the ego Mm -hmm. in control of my life.